John. Today we're going to explore the topic of the Trinity. As we begin, let's reflect on the picture these verses paint for us. Reading from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God in three persons. This is what Christians across the globe refer to as the Trinity. Frankly, I struggle to get my head around the idea of three in one. Maybe you do too. But to reject the concept of the Trinity simply because I cannot fully understand it is to make the mistake of thinking God is fully understandable. In reality, my finite mind cannot grasp that which is infinite. Job chapter 11 verse 7 asks, Can you fathom the depth of our God or discover the limits of the Almighty? Isaiah 55 verse 9 reads, For as heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Rather than being troubling to me, this comes as something of a relief. To serve a God whom I could understand completely would mean that God's mind is on par with mine, and that's a scary thought. I will gladly serve a God whose mind is far beyond my understanding. God is infinite, and we are finite. There are aspects of the Trinity that remain a mystery to us. But then to demand full understanding of all God's ways would be to render faith unnecessary. All the workings of the Trinity cannot be fully explained, nor can they be contained by our limited vocabulary. But God, through his word, has given us some understanding of the workings of the Trinity. Here are a few things scripture reveals for us. God is both holy and just, and God is love. Mankind rebelled against God and brought sin into the world, severing our relationship with God, who is holy and without sin. Scripture clearly tells us that the penalty for sin is death. The justice of God demands that payment be made. So you see, mankind has two problems. We have a sin problem and we have a death problem that we cannot solve ourselves. But then we're introduced to God's love. God the Father loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to solve both of our problems in the span of three days. God the Son satisfied the justice that God the Father required by dying on the cross to pay the penalty we owed for our sin. This is amazing sacrificial love. Three days later, he rose from the grave to defeat death itself, assuring us that God will one day raise us too. Then we read in John 14, verse 16, that the Son asked the Father to send the Spirit. Here's just a short list of some of the things revealed in Scripture that the Spirit brings to us in love. He reminds us of Christ's teaching. He convicts us of wrongdoing. He guides us to the Father's truth. His presence in our lives is our assurance of the promise of heaven. He's our counselor who molds us into the likeness of Christ. He is our comforter. This is not by any means an exhaustive list. It's just a glimpse. This is a brief glimpse of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Scripture is full of examples of the Trinity. And then we read in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are one in essence, one in truth, one in power and purpose, one in will and one in love. They act in harmonious unity, 
but they serve in different roles. So what are we to learn from this? What's our takeaway today? The way the Trinity functions is a beautiful example of the way we, who are followers of Christ, are to function. In the same way the Trinity works and acts in unity for the singular purpose of calling mankind to Christ, we are to work in harmonious unity for the singular purpose of pointing mankind to Christ. Matthew 28 verses 19 through 20 read, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Holy Spirit gifts each one of us with spiritual gifts that we are to use for the benefit of others. We are gifted in different ways, so we serve in different roles, like the Trinity. And, like the Trinity, we are called to work in unity with each other to reflect the love of God to a world that desperately needs Him. Each of you have been placed precisely where you are for a purpose, for His purpose, to be the chapel on your street to introduce people to God's love, to the grace of Jesus Christ, and to the care of the Holy Spirit. Here are two specific actions we can take this week. First, the Trinity works together in harmonious unity. If there is disharmony between you and a fellow, fellow believer, take steps this week to approach this person with humility and make every attempt to resolve your differences. Satan loves division. Secondly, make a list of all those people in your life who do not know Jesus and pray daily that God will orchestrate an opportunity for you to be, for that person, the hands and feet of Jesus. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.